that's a kind of legalism. It's just Jesus saying that the way we express our love for him is through the way we treat other people. And I'm just thinking about that as we're moving this teaching about marketplace ministry, that we have this wonderful privilege of loving people for Jesus. And it really is a privilege. And so many people around us are hurting and lost. And we have the honor of reaching out to them in love and demonstrating love and showing them that they have not been abandoned, that they're not hopeless, that they're not orphans. So everybody say this with me. Because of the grace of God, because of the grace of God, I am loved. I am loved. I have everything I need. I have everything, everything I need. To do everything. To do everything. God's called me to do. God's called me to do. So I commit to partnering with the Holy Spirit. With the Holy Spirit. To love those around me. To love those around me. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. And everybody said, Amen. It's awesome. Awesome. Well, why don't you give somebody a high five? Tell somebody good morning. It's great having everybody here. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, worship team. Welcome those of you joining us online. This is our Saturday morning service, and we're excited to see what God's going to do. We had a great time last night. How many of you were blessed last night if you were here? And Awesome. So uh, I'm going to stay out of the way. So <laughs> Marcus, come on up, brother, and share and introduce our guests today. Thank you, Pastor Max. Uh, I love the Saturday morning people. <laughs> they come for um, training and equipping. Um, one of the biggest things I, I um, believe in my life and that's helped me grow is that we have to continue to grow. I believe that if, if we're not growing, we're dying. We're not learning, we're losing. We have to continue to grow no matter what. And I've been um, blessed to be able to sit and talk with you know, the Dr. Randy Clarks, the Bill Johnson, the Andrew Walmack, and I've, I've sat and had meals with these guys and talked with them. And these are, I use them three as an example because they've all have like 50 year plus ministries and they're still growing and learning. It's a prime example of that's where our mentality should be. So that's what this is about. It's about growing. It's about learning. It's, it's about um, learning from other people. And I don't want you just to hear from me. And um, one of the God, things God's done in my life um, is that allowed me to be able to disciple and to minister to and run along with and um, help um, grow with um, some of these people. And one of the people that we have this morning is going to be talking to you about marketplace ministry is Guy. Now, I'll let Guy talk about everything that he does. Um, but Guy, Guy um, is a brother. Um, he is just a brother. When you get around him, you start talking to him, you just feel like he's family. Like he's just been in your family forever. He's just that brother that you love, that you could just be relaxed with. Um, I know I challenge Guy. <laughs> I stretch him a little bit because I'm a little bit out there. If you're around me enough, you're like, this guy's a little wild. He's a little bit crazy. But that's okay. I stretch him, but um, Guy helps ground me. And um, it's a, a priv privilege to have you um, part of the team and, and be with us. But one of the things I want you to know about Guy, his heart is to honor and serve God. It's just a pure desire to honor and serve God. It's not about being seen. He didn't ask to speak. I asked him to speak. You know, it's not, a, it's not about him being heard or, or anything like that. He just wants to serve and honor God with his life. And that is a true trait that's uh, wonderful that we all need more of. So, you know, just give it up for my brother Guy coming up here. Thank you. Oh, good morning. Now, I was actually born in Guilherme, as you can see it over there, but... My parents didn't think they were coming to the United States and people wouldn't be able to pronounce my name. So I go by Guy. So that's the easiest way. I was excited to find out when we were coming back. And I was, it's not an honor. It's a truly honor to be here with you guys and to be part of, of the ministry. And to know that you're going to Brazil. Pastor Max is going to Brazil, so that's awesome. Going back to my, actually going to Sao Paulo where 
where I am from. So that's great to um, great to know. Huh? Yeah, Brazil is a listen. If you haven't been to Brazil and you have opportunity of going to Brazil, go to Brazil. My English will probably transition to Portuguese, so bear with me. I speak really fast. So I'll try to slow it down. That's our that's our Latino culture that we have it in us. Um, I am a father. I have three amazing little ones, Ben, Jonah, and Tim. I'm married to Polly Ann, my amazing great wife that understands the calling of God and is actually up at 6 o'clock in the morning working at the restaurants while I'm here with you guys. So, um, you know, so it's an honor to and privilege to be married to her and that it's a woman that God has given to me and I, I just love that. Um, so I am an accountant. That's what I am. That's what I do. Uh, we also have um, two restaurants and a um, frozen pizza distribution uh, for, for uh, supermarkets. So we are in the marketplace. We are out there talking to people. In my accounting world, I am in, in government, in, in education. So I'll be, I'll, give, I'll be giving a little bit of testimonies here and there. But the restaurants um, is something we use um, we use a lot more uh, to be able to minister to people. When we, when we decided to open our second location, it was right before the pandemic, we set, we set our goal that that was going to be a place where we were going to, to use to honor God and you know, be able to minister to people. So um, a lot of we, we're privileged to have some of the employees that are Christian, so they are, you know, so they help us with that part of the ministry. And um, so that's it. Uh, we'll start, we'll talk about marketplace ministry this morning and, um, and uh, the notes that, we, that I have are on the app. So if you haven't downloaded the app last night, um, you're, you're, um, you're welcome to do it this morning or whenever you have an opportunity. So everything that I'll be talking is over there and a little bit more maybe, depending on how I, I talk here. So we're talking about carrying the cross in, in the marketplace. When, when Jesus was going through the Via Dolorosa, you know, he was showing to the people of, the, of Jerusalem, you know, that's who he was, he was talking to, right, when he was going through, when he was walking there. So that was the, the marketplace. So if Jesus has done it and we are to, to be like Jesus, then it's part of our job to do as he has done. So that's why when I, whenever I'm out and I try to, you know, to as much to portray that, that example of what God wants um, me to do, what God want, has called us to, to do. So to start off, I'll cover three three areas. We're going to talk about the foundation of marketplace ministry, the significance of marketplace ministry. We'll finish it up with the, uh, some practical steps uh, to minister, and then we're going to go into uh, some prayer time. You guys okay with that? So we, the, we'll start off with John 20, 21 in the foundation of marketplace ministry. And John 20, 21, Jesus sends his disciples Jesus said to them again, says, peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, even so I am sending you. In this verse, we see that Jesus is commissioning his disciples to continue his work. That's what he's doing here on earth by sharing the good news. To carry the cross through the marketplace, to carry the cross through everywhere they set their foot on. And we, and we are also given, we learn a lot about the Great Commission. And before I came to Christ in 2005, that's when I had my encounter with Jesus. And for many years, I didn't know what the Great Commission was. I knew that God has said, hey, go out and pray for people. And I was excited. I would go out and speak about Jesus, get the door slammed on me a couple of times. But I didn't know what the Great Commission was. And when, when my eyes were opened for that, I said, wow, where had I been since before all this other time? In the Great Commission, 
we are, Jesus gives instructions to his disciples to go out and spread the gospel. Not to just in our homes or our church, but everywhere. We listen a lot to, you know, oh, Jesus sent the disciples, but he sent you and I. That's a calling for you and I to go out and speak of what he has done. It's a, it's a clear message. Jesus is giving a clear message to all of those that believes in him to go out and speak. The, the marketplace is, I think Pastor Max said yesterday, that's where we are, we're at. You know, a lot of people can't be at church, right? Or they are afraid to step, to put their foot inside of a church. So the marketplace, the, your, your, your work, your street, your supermarkets, wherever you go, that's where you have, that's your, that's your, call it your stage, call it your platform. That's where you are to speak the love of God. And when I, when my, when I understood all this, I, that's when I started the most speaking in where I used to work, you know, at one of the, one of the places I worked for, um, so much that they actually changed the company policy and they, they left the book right, the, you know, the, the manual, whatever you call it, right open, right on my desk and says, you cannot preach, you can't do religion, religion inside of work. They didn't say I couldn't do it outside. Right? So, you know, come summertime, everybody's outside. Come springtime, everybody's outside. Come wintertime, people still will go outside. So I can still minister to them outside. Doesn't matter where, where it is. And it came to the point, you know, where I thought that maybe the, 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 the big ones, the management, weren't listening. That they were just mad because, you know, I was talking about Jesus. But it wasn't until one day that I was called into the office of a manager. And I thought that would be the day. I always came into work very early and to start my day and, and, and pray for, for work. Uh, I'll come in, I'll pray, I'll sit down at my desk, and, and, and that's what I'll be, I would be doing at work, praying for the, my, my management team, my bosses, and all that. And one day, this, this one manager that I knew he was the one that had changed the company policy, um, he called me into his office. So... To myself, I was like, okay, I am going to pack my desk. And, and he closed the door, and he started talking about life and his problems and how he had tried everything in the book to figure it out, to solve the problems that he was going through in his life, in his marriage, with his kids. And he turned around to me and says, nothing I've done worked. What can your God do? Praise Jesus. That was the best three-hour conversation I've had with my management team, with, you know, part of the management team. And from that point on, I was actually, it's not that I wasn't, I was not stopped anymore from speaking the word of God. You know, that he was, he was set free of a couple of things that he had done. And you could see the transformation in his life. And when we moved into a new building, we got to the point where we, in the morning, we would go ahead and pray for all the partners and, you know, go out, actually, you know, start walking around, go and uh, do whatever we had to do, where um, some other team members, um, you know, they, they were not Christians, but says, listen, I want to be part of what you're doing and, and pray for work. So I'm like, sure, let's go ahead. This is, this is what we do. 7 o'clock in the morning, we are here. So, that, so I'm just giving you an idea that no matter if a door closes, somebody tries to, to shut it, God has a greater purpose for you and I. And he will open up the door. So that's what we go for. Marketplace is an opportunity for Christians to be a light to the world. Right? Matthew uh, 5.14 says... That's who we are called to be, 
a light in this world. When we integrate faith into our work lives, we can influence all those that are around us. You don't have to be the best speaker. You don't have to have all the gifts that we've learned to speak about the word of God. But you are the mouthpiece of God if you allow God to speak and to use you. The marketplace is, like I said before, is our greatest mission field. I don't know if anyone here has walked into a place, like let's say you're going to a supermarket and you see somebody that needs, that you, you, you sense it in your spirit that, hey, there's something going on with that person. You might not understand why you want to talk to them, but next time, if you didn't, next time that happens to you, approach that person. You'd be amazed what God will do. You know, be amazed what you can do. You know, when we walk into, sometimes we walk into, uh, my wife says, I'm a very quiet person. I am quiet as you can possibly be. But when God wants to use you, he did it to me. And I will talk. I'll start the conversations out of blue. People say I... I have a tendency of starting complex conversations out of nowhere, you know, because I'm always trying to listen to what the Holy Spirit wants to do, you know. So I see it. I'll, I take it the outside of my house when I step outside of my doors. I take it as a mission field where I have to go. If I am breathing, it is my duty and my call to, to speak. Some ways that... We, we carry the cross in, in the marketplace is we have to, we have to cultivate a Christ-like character. There is, if you're going to, if you want to effectively carry the cross as Christians, we should have the characters of God, of Jesus, love, Patience, kindness, there has to be, there has to be in us. We have to understand that if you're going to approach somebody, you need to love on them. And that's something for a long time, it, it took me, I didn't understand. You know, Marcus yesterday said, you know, people will go out in the streets and to, to talk to people and they'll do a the checklist, right? Okay, I've done my I've done my Christian thing today, and and it wasn't until I learned that hey, it's not just to go out and do I don't know community time, it's to go out and love them and know that they are seen. People out there, they want to be seen. They want to be loved. They are hungry. Hungry. And we just need to open our eyes and love on them. So next time you are out, just make sure, you know, try to see how you are. I think it's back there. Yeah, it's okay. And the kindness, when we, if you, when we go out, when we go out in the streets, you know, sometimes I'm out with my kids and you know, and I see it in my kids, the love and kindness where they'll start talking, you know, and they will say, hey, dad, isn't, you know, why did, why is that person that way? You know, is there anything that, what can we do? And we try to, we try to explain to and teach our kids to, um, you know, people are people, if you know what I mean. Okay, so... When they're out, I said, you do the same thing. What did Jesus teach us to do? And, and I see it, how that influences them. So I see it, how our life influences our kids' life, right? It's, it's part of us. It's part of who we are as parents to, to teach our kids to just fulfill and, and walk in those steps. 
We pray for opportunities. As Christians, we should pray for, for, for opportunities to share our faith. You know, I mentioned that I'll walk in the morning and I'll go ahead and pray for everyone. And that's how I, that's how I started my day. If somebody wasn't feeling well, they'll come up and say, you know, can you pray for me? You know, countless times my office was, I shared up my office was on the same floor as some of the partners were. So, you know, and then all the yelling and everything that goes on through the day happens upstairs. It would happen upstairs on that floor. But many times the partners will go into my office. They'll close the door and they'll use it as a way to, to vent and speak. And I could see how God allowed me to, to, you know, walk them through. doesn't matter if they're Christian or not. They still want to be heard. There is the professional side of people, but there is also the side of people, a real person that just needs to be loved and heard. Where I am now, it's, it's when I started, it wasn't easy to speak, and it still is not today. But I see how God gives opportunities. When I remember one day going into work, and I actually had a tie that had the fish on, you know, the little the, the Christian. And somebody walked in the hallway and said, if I were you, I would change that tie and take it out of your neck or, or take it out of your neck. I said, why? Well, you can't preach here. I'm like, I am not preaching. It's my tie. It, does it offend you? Does it offend you? And the person said, yeah, it does. I'm like, okay. And maybe six months later, you know, I was able to share the love of God. You know, because you just don't give up. You don't give up. We have, we have instances where I'm in, a, I'm in a, we're in close. There was one day we were in a meeting. It was just um, this person and I, um, not a Christian, different religion, and closed doors, talking business, and all of a sudden I feel the presence and a feather comes down. Closed door, office. So I get up because I see, you know, we're both looking at it and the feathers coming down. So I go and I, I grabbed it and person looks to me and says, is there a bird inside of here? <laughs> and I said, no, let me talk to you what that is. <laughs> you know, and my, my middle son, Jonah, has a uh, severing count. He, he has open, you know, he has the open vision. He sees angels. And so I started sharing what my middle one, my seven-year-old, goes through and how he talks to us. Hey, Dad, there's an angel right there. Uh, and all of a sudden, he runs to the other room. And he said, the angels just ran to that room. So I started talking to him about it. And the eyes were just like, wow, that's really possible. I'm like, yeah. Yeah. There has been instances where I'll give out, I'll hand out a document and all of a sudden the document a piece of the document it would shine and I'll, I ask this time I asked the person do you have a, a piece of tape and I'm like why do you need tape for I want to show you something that just showed up on this piece of paper and then I'll go and I'll get the little I'll get it a little piece of gold and that's just opportunities that God gives for us to minister. We can't pass it out. We cannot, we cannot let that escape. Sometimes we think that we're not able to speak with certain individuals because of who they are or the, you know, in my world, you know, um, what they do and being, being in, in, in government. And, but God just opens the way. He just opens the way. I've known people that you know, when they when you start speaking about God and they know and they'll pass by and says, You're a Christian? I'm like, Yes, I am. Oh, so am I. I've known you for years. I've never had heard you saying amen before. 
You know, we can't be, oh, but I'm afraid to speak. And I'll say, okay, let me walk you through it. Let me show you the easiest way to, to start your day. It's the moment you walk in. The moment you walk into the doors, you scan your ID to come in. It says, God, what do you want me to do today with those that are here? And you'd be amazed what God would do. The things that he would show, you know. Um, we're walking, we're walking in, um, I was leaving work one day late. And I don't know why I stayed late that time. Um, it was like 7 o'clock at night. I'm going through the opposite door from the main door of the building. And someone that works with us, he had broken a foot. So he was working you know, on, the on, the, uh, on the boot. And, you know, we're you know, walking that way. And he, I, I asked him, like, oh, how are you feeling? He's like, oh, there's so much pain and this and that. And I says, do you mind if I pray for you? Seven o'clock at night in the middle of the hallway. Is it okay for me to pray for you? He's like, sure. I mean, you know, why not? So quick prayer, simple. You know, Jesus, you know, heal his foot. Take the pain away. In Jesus' name, amen. The moment I said, Jesus, take the pain away, his eyes went wide open. And I said, what happened? After the amen, I said, what happened? It's like, where did my pain go? I don't feel anything. I'm like, walk a little bit. And he's walking. He's like, where did it go? I'm like, like, where do you think? <laughs> so that was the opportunity that God gave for that for me. Because I had mentioned about God to that person before. And how, you know, for other things that sometimes he would talk to me. But he had never allowed the full interaction of the Holy Spirit until that day. And today, every time there's something that happens, he says, can you pray for this person? Can you pray for that person? Can you do this? I'm like, so in the beginning, I would pray. And says, pray with me. Now, I see when he comes to me and says, can, we, can you pray for the person? He says, I will listen while you pray. You got to have the faith. And he starts to share how, you know, he needs to have his kids come to Christ and his family. So you start seeing the transformation. You start seeing how God, how God moves no matter where you are. We are called to serve others. Jesus modeled a servant leadership. So when you are out there and you love people, you love on people, you help them, you listen to them. If they need something done and you're able, if they need a ride to the supermarket and you're able to do it, if it's someone you know, extend, extend the help. We don't have to do great things for God to move. All you have to do is, you know, meet the needs of the people as much as, you know, as much as they allow you to until you see it that they're fully open to the gospel. It's just amazing. When we were here last year, we went out in the streets, and there was this this couple um, that spoke Spanish, and I speak a little bit of Spanish. And the lady started sharing. She was Christian, not the husband wasn't. And for over 20 years, she was praying for him to have Christ into his life. And that afternoon, I think it was after service that we went, you know, we could see God touching them and the tears just because she took one minute, kneel down and says, how are you? You know, they're, they were drinking their soda that they got from the team, you know, just say, how are you? And that just opens up a whole way. Sometimes we speak with people, we talk with people and we say, hey, how are, how are you on the streets? Or in a store. I love when people have name tags on them. And when you say, if you're going to say something, you say it and you say their name. 
And they're like, and I'm like, you have your name tag on. You know, but that just, it, you're just going a little bit more and then people just start talking to you. God opens those doors if we allow him to, to speak. The marketplace is, a, is the midway step to, for people to be in here. That's where, you, that's where you start. Once you establish a relationship, and sometimes you will establish a relationship with people, you can invite them to your home groups, to your, I don't know what you guys have here, uh, to the church. And don't give up. Don't give up on people. You can, sometimes you will try to invite somebody a hundred times through the 101. Go that extra step. And, you know, we've seen it. Amazing things happen when we just don't give up on people. There's a, there's a cartoon that, not a, I don't know if it's a cartoon or something that is on the, on the internet that the guy is digging and he's looking for a diamond. And he's digging, he's digging, he's digging, and then he gives up because he gets tired. And you could see it through the image that if he had gone one more time, he would have reached a diamond. We are in search. We have to be searching for the diamonds. We have to be in search. We have to go out there. And when we see people, we have to see them for who they are, who God sees them. And we're, we're taught, we learn where to see the gold in people. That's what God wants. How does God see people? So whenever you approach somebody, you know, ask God, you know, what is it that you want to share about this person? That I can talk to them to know that you know who they are. So they can be aware that you love them. So that's, to me, that's what Marketplace is about. It's a mission field. It's a place to go and show what Jesus did in my life and be able to share that to others. Not only where I work, at the restaurants, where we see people coming in and we talk to them. And we don't, we don't care if... If it's a packed house and somebody needs to receive prayer, we will stop in the middle of what we are doing. You know, if even if an employee, for whatever reason, we feel that, you know, something is going on, we'll ask us, do you, you, you want to receive prayer? Stop what you're doing and pray. And, yeah, we, can, we have people that turn their heads and say, hey, aren't you going to bring my food out? And you're praying to them. It's okay. It's okay, it's a restaurant, we're there for profit, but before, before all of that, we're there for Jesus. That's what we set it up for. That's what we want. I want to take time to pray with you. And I don't know, I have something in my heart that says some people are afraid to, maybe afraid is not the right word, are shy to go out and speak. Just have, so God wants to remove this barrier, this wall that a lot of times we put up for our own protection. And I feel that God wants to remove that. So I want to ask if you, you know, if you could stand. And if this person is you, if you want to take the extra, the extra mile, the extra step to allow yourself to be used by God and not only break your barrier, but break other people's barrier for the love of Jesus, extend your arms out. Start to invite Holy Spirit into your life now. We know He's here. Start talking to him and asking him, Jesus, break down the walls, bring down the walls. 
I want you and nothing but you. You and nothing but you. Allow me to share your love. Allow me to share your love, Jesus. <laughs> we thank you, Holy Spirit. We thank you for transformation for lives that will be changed because all of us that are here tonight this morning will reach others come Holy Spirit have your way have your way into our hearts Jesus, we love you. Help us show your love to others. be seated yes give you a good hand my gosh um i love what you said is it when we go out when we leave our homes when we leave the church it's an opportunity it's an opportunity every time you go to the grocery store you go get gas you're just gonna go to work it's an opportunity what if we change our perspective to that? It is an opportunity to share the love of Jesus with somebody. That is just a great point. I just love that. Um, and don't you love Guy? I mean, just when he talks, isn't just like this kind of fatherly, pastoral presence comes. It's just so good. Um, thank you, brother. We're on.